We're talking today with Bill Dempsey, Dean of the College of Business at Kutztown University. Dr. Dempsey, thanks for taking time today. My pleasure. We are here in your office on the on the campus of Kutztown, and um, I I'm curious about about uh, kind of the the prevailing trends in in business in higher education. Um, First of all, it, I'm, I'm guessing you've, you've been doing this for a while. What's right. the what's the biggest change you've seen in in uh, business programs and curriculum at, in higher education? Well, one thing that's noticeable when I was a student in the mid '60s in business versus today is the proportion of women in uh, business degree programs. I can remember <clears throat> uh, at the University of Maryland, for example. Uh, it was unusual to have a woman in a business class, and uh, today it's our school. It's uh, almost 50 percent women seeking a bachelor's degree in business. So that that's one change that goes back 40 to 50 years. Right. So that that's a long time, but that's one change that's noticeable to uh, someone like myself. Anything happening more recently that you can identify? More more recently, I think. Uh, the technology, the communications technologies, and uh, the uh, use of uh, internet and uh, tweeting and Facebook and all of those things. And one thing that uh, is interesting is that the kids, young people coming into the university today, are actually more. Many of them are more adept at using uh, social media than the faculty. Or and, and administrators like myself, and, and particularly in a in a business context, <coughs> in a no, this is just in general. Yeah. But there is a business overlap when it comes to how do you advertise, how do you promote your products, services, and so on. Sure. So I just visited uh, one of my daughters and my three grandchildren in North Carolina, and those kids spent a lot of their time on iPad and on an iPhone and on a PC playing games and looking at things, and that's quite different than when I was uh, a youngster. You know, it was, in those days, it was all hard copy. Have you had to learn about some of these things? I have, just to try to keep up, but I'm not an uh, experienced veteran. And I would, my guess is that one of my grandsons uh, knows a lot more about these things than I do. <laughs> Let's talk about um, the way the programming maybe has changed. I, I get the sense that there's there's um, a growing interest in entrepreneurism, yes. maybe less in what might be considered the traditional accounting, financial kind of uh, programs. Well, or I would, I would say that the typical business student is someone who intends to work for somebody, intends to go into accounting as a, maybe a CPA or join a CPA firm or uh, work in marketing or whatever. And the, the students that are going to end up being entrepreneurs are probably not business students in terms of majority. Uh, so we have at Kutztown right now a grant from the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education to uh, create and continue a entrepreneurial leadership center. And what we're doing is we're working with faculty throughout the university to change or to create new courses having to do with how would you start and operate, let's say, an art studio or a dance uh, studio or something like that where your, your idea is that you want to be self-supporting and but you need to know uh, how to acquire financing, how to, what to do in terms of contracts and legal matters sure. and so on. So what we're trying to do is create, or we have not, we're in the midst of creating curriculum that would help students in the arts and, and other areas in the university to succeed as uh, entrepreneurs. So those are not, <coughs> not necessarily business programs per se, but they're, they're, right. they're programs that would teach business principles right. to, to people who have other interests. Right. So for example, uh, either the course would be a new course created or it could be a module created to put in an existing course to help a student uh, in perhaps the performing arts to start a dance studio, right? Something like that. Right. We were chatting uh, a little bit before, and you mentioned uh, the the trend that's been prevalent now for a while, and that's the declining 
state support to, right. to higher education. What, what kind of an impact has that had on uh, the College of Business? It's what the impact that it will have on a College of Business, or for that matter, across the university and other disciplines, uh, will end up with larger average class sizes because we won't be able to afford as many temp adjunct faculty members. Um, we'll, we'll have less uh, wherewithal to send faculty to conferences and, and keep up in their disciplines. Um, there'll be less money to renovate facilities or build new facilities, so there'll be, uh, it'll make the job of uh, higher education more difficult. <coughs> Excuse me, but it, it's uh, it, it's of concern to me because when I went to college in the early '60s, it was the go-go years, post-Sputnik era. Lots of money was put in. Now it's uh, we're we're struggling in higher education just to maintain what we have, and uh, we're also having to to uh, do a lot of cost cutting. We're going to be looking much more at programs and keeping programs that don't have lots of graduates that'll be a, a, a that'll be one impact um, so it, it's going it, it has a pro already had and will continue to have a profound impact on higher education and included in that will be some impact on business it'll probably have more of an impact on programs in the arts and sciences that don't have lots of majors business majors uh, the business major continues to be popular so, for instance, we have here at Kutztown about 1,500 undergraduate students seeking a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with a variety of majors. We also recently uh, uh, merged or, or uh, have under uh, the College of Business the uh, Department of Sport Management and Leadership, which uh, came out of education but uh, is definitely designed to help young people get into the, uh, the area of sports management and, and parks and programs and things like that. Um, we are seeking what's called AACSB accreditation from the leading accrediting uh, agency for business uh, schools and we're entering our fourth year of carrying out a, an approved plan and this next year is going to be a very hectic busy year as we conduct a, an extensive self-study indicating why we're meeting a variety of uh, standards for accreditation in business. And, and is, would this be a big deal to get this accreditation? It would be very helpful to Kutztown. Others in our in the state system like uh, Westchester, Bloomsburg, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, Shippensburg, and Clarion, they have acquired this accreditation. <coughs> Excuse me, currently Edinburgh University is seeking it as a, at about the same stage we are. But it's what's important is it provides the parents and people uh, seeking a business degree assurance that the quality of the program has been validated by external review. It's not self-aggrandizing uh, or bragging. Sure. Are there how many colleges in Pennsylvania would would have this accreditation? Uh, a fair number. In the Pennsylvania state system, uh, five do. Uh, Temple, Pittsburgh, Penn State do. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies are kicking in. Um, Penn State Capital Campus does. Uh, so it's not just Penn State main campus. Uh, I would, in, uh, in terms of private schools, uh, quite a few do. St. Saint, Saint Joe's, okay. uh, LaSalle. For instance, uh, Duquesne. But to have it would help you market to potential yes, students. Yes, yeah, and it would it would provide uh, more assurance to people who are students or those supporting those students that they're getting uh, quality education for the time and money spent. So if if um, and we'll probably let this be the last question. If you if colleges are having to kind of reevaluate programs based on. Uh, declining resources, is there, <coughs> is there some sense that you have to kind of be creative in identifying um, courses, programs of study that would attract right. a yeah. high number of, of uh, students? Oh yeah, you, you need to have a basic, the basics of business, but um, most schools are going to find that <clears throat> they need to have some 
notoriety for specializations that other schools don't. So for uh, we've done very well in the in our history here in accounting, for example. We believe there's a real opportunity for us to get more involved in supply chain management, and we're trying we're intending to uh, make that a specialization that would. Um, distinguish cuts down, let's say, from others. You see a niche there that's yeah, not being yeah, right. filled. Yeah, it, it's a good niche, and it's a very popular. It's a fast-growing niche in higher education. <clears throat> and in industry, I would oh, assume. Yeah, there's, industry, a, there's, a, there's, sure. a, there's a need for people oh, yeah, who definitely. know how to work the numbers <clears throat> in supply chain logistics. And, yeah, and we've, and we've seen the success, for example, of Walmart and others who have really done that uh, excellent job in lining up everything and having a great supply chain. But it's, a, it's very important because it's a, logistics is a, and supply chain management, a lot of cost there that can be reduced. And if you're not going <clears> to <throat> be able to get your cost down, you're going to be at a price disadvantage. So supply chain is very important. So we think we have, uh, we're right in the corridor here between Boston and Washington in terms of of uh, commerce and uh, transportation, warehousing, and all you have to do is go to Briningsville or other areas and look at the huge warehouses, and you can see that this is a the whole, the whole supply I-78 chain. Carter. Yeah, right. I-78 um, and, and I-95 and so forth are all coming through this general area. <clears throat> Bill, that'll be the last word today. Really? Oh, good. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.